All right, hi. Um, I hope you can hear me. Uh, I'm Devki Kulkarni, product manager for InfoSight. And what I want to do today is take you through a tour of VM Vision feature. Like you already heard, Lada? Okay. Uh, you already heard the capabilities of InfoSight from RAD. Our, dev our development philosophy, like he pointed out, is to predict issues as much as possible. And if, there is, uh, if our users indeed run into an, into an issue, then at least we guide them to the most likely cause. And for that, correlation is really key, rather than sifting through a mountain of raw data. So expanding InfoSight into monitoring virtualization environments has been a step in that direction. And that's the feature we call as VM Vision. I want to point out that this feature is live today, in production, accessible to all of our customers. Starting point for InfoSight, what you can expect from VM Vision is the ability to easily correlate virtual machine performance data to the host that it's sitting on, neighboring VMs, and the underlying storage, of course, which we understand the best. So here it is, the login page for InfoSight. Of course, you can monitor all of Nimble's own assets, arrays, volumes, and so on. To get to the virtualization piece itself, all you do here is go to the virtualization en environment. And this lands you in a page that has multiple parts, and I'll walk you through each part of it. On your left, you see a hierarchical view. If you are a virtual center admin, this view looks familiar to you. In what is called the host view, you see the entire hierarchy, the virtual center, the data center, the clusters, and the individual host itself. On the right, just follow my mouse, and on the right, we present several dashboard views. Why, why are we doing this? This is in order to give a quick summary to users in order to answer questions they may be asking on a day-to-day -day basis for operational purposes. So under host activity, like you can see, we report, of course, a list of all the hosts, usage stats, and not just that, some common problems they may hit for in terms of performance. So you see ready time, swap and balloon. And there's an also an example that in this environment, there may be some memory pressure. So again, the philosophy is try to get to most likely causes very, very quickly. Similarly, top VMs, this is one of the things that our users, users asked us quite a bit. Uh, can you just give me, I have hundreds and even thousands of VMs, but can you tell me the summary of VMs that are running pretty hard on my storage, both in terms of I.O. and in terms of latency? And that's what this page is intended to do. Conversely, there's inactive VMs, a quick list, which in other tools would take multiple tabs or rules in order to get to it. We simply define this as VMs that haven't done I.O. in a week or more. Now, of course, actions you can take are quite varied. You can reclaim resources, but I've had customers get pretty creative in terms of how they interpret this, but we leave that up to the users. And then there is the data store uh, tree map. Pretty cool feature in terms of getting this overall view of what goes on in the array broken down by data store. And if you drill down, you can go into VMs as well. The size of the box indicates the number of IOs being done, added by all the underlying VMs. And the color might be hard to see, but the darker the color, the higher the latency. And there's a bar that explains it. And it's all relative. And this will change based on how high the latency itself is. Is the latency what's reported from VMware or from the Nimble? So the storage part, of course, we know it best. We report it. For the virtual machine part of it is something we get from Virtual Center. Okay. 
and I'll show you some more details on that. So this is sort of the lay of the land, um, some of the features. But you know, when I ask customers, you know, how do you use this? What, what are some of the common scenarios that they run into? This is what they typically say. Um, say it's a VDI environment. IT help desk typically gets a call. Developer says, hey, my VM is slow. IT guy says, OK, for how long? It's like, I don't know, maybe weeks. OK, what happened? What is slow? Everything is slow. That's how typical conversations go. Then you ask, OK, which virtual machine is it? Then the question is, what do you do with that information? So say you got that virtual machine name. Here's what we want to help them get to. So this search box helps you get to that easily. So I just typed a part of the name of a VM that I was interested in getting. And what you get as results is set of all objects grouped by its type. As in, there were multiple objects in this environment with VCENT in it, both data stores and VMs. Now I'm interested in this one particular VM. So let's just go there. And when I click on it, two things happen. On your left, you got this exact hierarchy of where this virtual machine sits. And on the right, you get to the correlations page. Now I want you to focus on the first part of the screen. So of course, when you hear performance issues, what is the first thing you'll think about? Of course, it's a storage problem. But you know, what we hear more and more, and when we look at the kind of issues they face, or users face, that may not be the case. And that's what I want to point out here, which is why we have broken the latency of a virtual machine as it applies to different parts of the stack. Specifically, how much is the host contributing to it? How much is the networking component to it? And what about storage itself? This may be a little hard to see, but that's the storage piece of it. So in terms of colors, in this particular chart, the top part is blue. That's the host. The bottom is black, that's the network. The last one is green. You can barely see green in this case, telling me that the host was doing the most amount or incurring the most amount of latency for this virtual machine. So all right, I got here, I got a call, I got here. Around this time, so this one is an actual case that happened internally. Right around a few weeks ago, the user complained that the latencies were low. And as you can see, this blue bar is slowly increasing in size. So OK, now that I'm, I already know that this is because of the host. And if I hover my mouse on over it, you can see that the latency contributed by the host is much larger than the network or storage. Storage is 0.24 in case you can't see it. So if that's the host, then what may be happening? So all I need to do is see the correlated piece. This is the host view for the virtual machine that's sitting on it. And just eyeballing tells you that memory usage has gone up. Could that be a cause? Or is, there, is there any other further issue to help me root cause this? Maybe. So when I see this, so look at this. InfoSight identified that there was a memory swap detected. And in this case, since the user has complained, it was easy to get and point this as a likely cause. So this is what I mean as an example by saying correlations are what make it easy to point to the most likely causes. And in this case, it wasn't even storage. Um, and it, this is true pretty much across the stack to do any kind of root cause analysis. And, However, and, and, and this information is available to the user? Yes, for all our customers. All your customers. And you're getting this VM vision information from vCenter and vSphere right. and stuff like that. That's right. That's right. So there's no additional installation of agent or client side required. We get it on the array. Um, and again, this is well thought through because since we were sitting on a lot of analytics, we took a slightly different approach in terms of going through presenting use cases as opposed to, hey, sort through this, just look at CPU, just sort through this, look at. What about like uh, uh, service providers or you know where you have multiple customers using the, the storage? I mean, 
do they, is it to the customer level, is it the service provider level? I mean, do they all have access to the info site? Yes, so service providers actually uh, do have access to it. Um, in fact, uh, um, I was at a customer council yesterday in Phoenix, attended, and many of them were service providers. I tried to demo this feature to them, and before I even said a word, one guy got up and said, by the way, guys, if you're not using this, I don't get why. And it was very heartwarming to see that, pretty rewarding. Excuse me, um, do, you, do you plan to, to use the same uh, feature on uh, Hyper-V, for example, or also on physical servers? So uh, if you take a guess on the roadmap, you'd be right. Um, <laughs> you know, right now, it's enabled for virtual VMware alone. Um, again, based on feedback and data we had, but that's a possibility. If I've got a nimble storage array and I have a third-party storage array as well, uh, can I see uh, virtual machine performance on a third-party array as well? Uh, can you repeat the last part of it? I couldn't uh, hear. So is, are these statistics limited to nimble storage arrays, or can I see uh, virtual machine performance on a third-party array as well? So today it's nimble only. Okay. Today it's nimble only. Right? So again, to continue, this was the host view. Similarly, you can correlate this virtual machine's performance with what might be happening on the data store that it is sitting on. So this VM is sitting on this particular data store. And again, you can see a breakdown in its IO performance. Similarly, you might probably want to know what's happening with each virtual disk. Same statistics again in terms of IOPS, latency, and throughput. And if there are multiple disks, you can go to any one of them. And then the most important, noisy neighbors. We all know virtualization environments easily let users get into this situation where potentially noisy VMs can disrupt performance. And this click tells you just that. So what this means, what this screen means, is this SJCIS VM shares its virtual disks with these VMs on that data store. And this is a pretty much quick summary of what they might be doing in terms of the IOPS. Are you seeing VMs or, or VMDKs or? VMDKs. VMDKs. So that is a quick tour of some of the features, especially within VM Vision, that I wanted to highlight to all of you. Again, it's, we, it's hard to isolate and pinpoint issues and get to what to fix. Correlations is key, and that will be our guiding principle going forward. About what percentage of your storage systems are installed in the VMware environment? Do you have any rough numbers or anything like that? We do have those numbers. Um, I don't know if we share them or it's, it's, it's a pretty sizable chunk is what I can say, which is what drove some of the feature development as well. Yeah. yeah? So I mean, the question pertains to itself. If it's VMware is a sizable chunk, then <laughs> Hyper-V is not a sizable. <laughs> so we follow basically the market adoption yeah. for both Hyper-V and VMware, maybe slightly ahead than market adoption for VMware because we've had that investment in lead gen for a long time. But Hyper-V is gaining a lot of traction in our install base as well, keeping up with their market share. Uh, more, more in certain geographies than others, so more Europe, <laughs> APAC. Yeah. You've probably seen that too. So again, this is all easier said than done. Um, the advantage we have, of course, is this. This is something we built ground up, integrated pretty well to do effective correlations and analytics, and to also have accurate data for the users itself. So just to give you more details and have, let you have a peek into what goes on under the hood, and what this development looks like and the fun that we have on a day-to-day -day basis. I will turn it over to Mark Cook, my co-worker in the data scientist group. Again, thank you for coming. Just, just one uh, thing, there was a question online, I think, um, just from a security perspective. So um, the, the VM vision portion of, of InfoSight is opt-in. So if you have VMware, a VMware environment in your infrastructure with nimble storage, we don't automatically collect and send that data without you first opting into that feature. 
Um, and then uh, the other the other thing that we do, we probably brought this up at uh, one of the previous storage uh, field days, and that is that our resellers. Uh, can view customers' information within InfoSight to help their customers, you know, manage that environment. They don't actually get to see the VM vision data because some VMs might be a little more sensitive with names and so on. So we don't let them see those. And that's that's opt-in too, of course. So in other words, the reseller doesn't get to see their every field encrypted on your storage, including VM names, including notes, or any sort of annotation. Yeah. If in in. Then back at this end, when we yes. get it, you're saying it's not encrypted on this end. All right. Do you have requests to support such a an environment on containers also? Do you have someone asking for that? Uh, obviously not today. We are not supporting that, but we are very closely watching what the market shares are. Right? I mean, VMware was the technology to partition compute hardware so to speak. There's a lot of other things that can run on that compute hardware and partition it now, and we're watching very, very closely. We have actually a team internally that uh, somebody who actually hands-on works on Docker. Uh, we have a Docker deployment internally that we consume. Uh, our IT consumes containers. Um, and so we're looking at that and playing around with it, but not something we can announce right now. <laughs> 